everybody, and welcome to episode 154 of the Let's Play World. Let me tell you what that terrible sound is. You might remember last episode, we had some sniffers over here in the zoo, and I put together, oh hello, this little device here, and all that it is, is a note block with a couple of observers making it go off over and over and over again, and you can see I've got a couple of allay, one with the uh, torch flower seeds, and the other guy's got the pod plant, uh, pitcher plant thing here. And so what they do is they just wait for these guys to drop them. They pick them up, drop them over here by the note block. The hoppers pick it up. And as you can see, we've got a few of them. This is quite a long time of being AFK. So we've got 20 floor torch flower seeds, and we've got 18 pitcher pods. So that's a good start, I think. If we want to have uh, more sniffers, we can use the torch flower seeds to breed them up. And I think that's going to be plenty to put in our Arboretum. So let's grab those, head over to the Arboretum, and leave this terrible sound behind for a while. Alright, I'm going to grab some rockets, and you might remember the Arboretum was over on the other side of town here. Fly down our main drag here towards our 100 episode monument past the stadium. This big glass building here, this is the Arboretum. And we built this to be a place to house all of our plants and everything. And I left a few trees, got some vines growing, got some bamboo growing. Got some glow berries, and that's about it. So this thing, I want to fill up with plants, all kinds of plants, some trees, some bushes, all kinds of stuff. And uh, now that we have the um, cherry blossoms, I think that'll be a nice addition, both the leaves and the uh, pink petals that go on the ground. Yeah, I think that we can make this look really cool. this is turning out really, really awesome. I left a little bit of space to kind of future-proof, just in case more plants get added, and I want to kind of give you a tour of what I've done here. So when we walk in, this is what it looks like. We've got this really nice pool that's surrounded by all kinds of flowers, got a big old cherry blossom on either side with all those petals falling, looks really great. And it's pretty, um, Formal, meaning that like 
this is the same as that corner is the same as that corner and the same thing with these corners here pretty uh symmetrical as we walk over this way on the left hand side we've got all of our sunflowers in the center we've just got a little bit of mix of white and blue down here we've got some of the sweet berries and uh oak trees and on the left side here this interesting mix of bamboo and glowberries with some of the weird mushrooms mixed in here we walk around the back we got this nice tall bamboo which looks really really great i kind of sprinkled vines throughout which will probably continue to grow and kind of take over the place and then as we walk in this direction in the center it's just a ton of tulips which i think looks really great Got a little bit of space over here and a little bit of space over here i added some cactus and then in this corner over here we've got some acacia trees and the new torch flowers which look really really cool so yeah there's our uh well, this is interesting hello mr mushroom this is really great and i love the pink petals they just add that kind of overgrown look like things are just kind of doing their own thing oh yeah and in here i did all kinds of aquatic plants so that you can see there's kelp in there the drip leaf the uh, lily pads the whole thing and it looks awesome so the next thing i want to do is head back over to the tower but before we get there i want to talk a little bit about the trivia questions i've been posing to you all if you follow along on my channel you'll notice that every week there's some minecraft trivia and it's pretty impressive how you all do and really interesting what you find difficult so um i realized that you see if you got it right or not but you don't get to see how people did and so i want to share the results of the last few weeks worth of minecraft trivia with you and see what you think but first we're going to walk outside and i want to fly over the top of this thing and see what it looks like from out here very cool very busy that's awesome took a while to get to it but i really wanted to wait for those 1.20 plants and speaking of plants we've got the little uh conservatory over here as well i'm getting them all confused we just worked on the conservatory this is the arboretum yeah, over here we have one of every tree you know kind of represented all the way throughout and then down here we have the different types of wood and all of that represented but there's new flowers and there's new wood now so we need to update this as well but i'm going to save that for a future episode yes so this is the arboretum where we have all of the trees and then the conservatory of flowers is where we just got done working i had my terms confused anyway let's head back towards the tower and talk about trivia Okay, the first one I posted at the beginning of July, and it says it's my birthday. Any guesses to how old I am? Half of you got this right. I am 50 years old, which is just a crazy number to consider. Those of you who thought I was 32 or 40, I appreciate that. Uh, whoever thought I was 65, we need to have a conversation. The next one, Minecraft trivia time. Which block requires a diamond to craft? And almost all of you got this one. It's a little bit of a weird question because... You just don't craft that many jukeboxes, but yeah, you need a diamond to make a jukebox. The next one, one diamond pickaxe will mine about as much stone as how many iron pickaxes? And again, about half of you got this one right. It's a little bit surprising. Um, you know, sometimes it doesn't always make sense as far as like how durable the tools are. You know, sometimes it feels like um, iron should be more durable than it is, but yeah, it was kind of all over the place here, but uh, yeah, about half of you got that one right. Which of these mobs has the most health? Again, most of you guessed this one right. The Guardian has the most health out of all of these. Some people thought the Phantom, a couple people thought the Blaze, uh, which I totally understand. Those are both tough mobs. Quick poll, would you be interested in a Todd 13 membership? A couple of you said sure if it's cheap and I get cool stuff. 
a large group said I'd pay a few dollars to chat and play on a server with Todd 13. And then a majority said, no, I just like watching the videos, which is totally fine. I don't need people to sign up for a membership or expect you to, but I'm really thinking about some way to get the people who really enjoy this channel and really want to engage more a way to do that. So I'm kicking around some ideas. Once I come up with something, I'll let you know. In vanilla Minecraft 1.20, which item can be crafted by a player? A saddle, a golden apple, or chainmail armor? Most of you got this one right. The golden apple is craftable. It's wild to me that you can't craft a saddle. You have to find a saddle in order to get one. And chainmail armor, I think there used to be way, way back a way to do that, like in the beta uh, times. But yeah, you can't craft that either. You just have to find it. Usually a skeleton will drop it. In Java Edition, which unenchanted item does the most damage? Believe it or not, the diamond shovel of all of these does the most damage. Even more than a golden sword, which is just wild. Once, of course, you add enchantments, that totally changes. Yeah, these items, you can use them as weapons. They're not great, but uh, yeah, the diamond shovel has the most damage. Most of you thought it was the golden sword, and that makes perfect sense. A couple of you thought a pickaxe, which again, makes way more sense than like a shovel, but nope, that's the one. Which mob does not have 100% knockback resistance? About half of you got this one right. The Ravager does not have 100% knockback resistance. It's pretty high. I can't remember if it's like 85 or 90%, but it's not 100%. The Iron Golem, the Shulker, and the Warden, they take no knockback. In Minecraft 1.20, how many different wood slabs are there? This one's a little bit tricky. Some people forget about the nether wood and the slabs that happen there. And then it's easy to forget about bamboo as well because it's not your traditional kind of wood that you would chop down. But about 74% of you got this one right. Which of the following can you not use to breed tamed wolves? Most of you got this one right, 66%. Uh, you can't use bones. Believe it or not, you can use rotten flesh. Doesn't seem very intuitive, but yeah, that is totally possible to do. Which of these mobs is not immune to fall damage? This one was all over the place. About 39% of you guessed goat, and that was the right answer. The snow golem is absolutely immune to fall damage, and the cat is absolutely immune to fall damage. The goat can fall pretty far, but it is not immune. And finally, which block has the highest blast resistance? About 59% of you got this one right. Endstone has the highest blast resistance out of these here, even higher than cobblestone or blocks of iron. They're all still pretty low, you know, compared to obsidian, they're not even close. But endstone is a little bit tougher than cobblestone is. Before we jump into the wool farm, I want to show you some of the work I did on the tunnel to the mangrove outpost. Because I did a fair amount of work out here. As you get here, you can see that I continued this down a little bit further. And where these little green intersections are, I built those out almost all the way down. See, all the way down to here, I've got those green parts filled in. Still have the in-betweens to do but we are making progress and that's what counts. All right, to the wool farm. So I did just a little bit of work over there, as you can see, and I captured a few sheep. The sheep were all over by the village. This area was completely void of sheep and it's because there's a bunch of wolves occupying the forests around here so yeah there weren't any sheep over here i had to run all the way over there to get the sheep but here they are and as you can see there's some stuff going on here so what we've got is a rail line and this is what is going to run over to the base to send the uh, wool over to the base the minecart right here is going to be emptied and if we kind of jump up here, you can see this big platform. Right above the platform is where the grass is going to be, and the sheep will be on top of that. And so as the sheep get sheared, this minecart will pick it up, it'll deposit it here, 
got just a little unloader and then the minecart here will take that on over to the base. As far as what is going to send this off, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure how much wool we're going to get, and so I don't know how often this minecart needs to be sent off. I could use a daylight sensor and just send it off once a day or something like that, but we'll see. I feel like we're going to get more wool than that. And so this little thing here, um, we're going to build four of them eventually. There'll be four of these little platforms like this. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And that way we can figure out all of the redstone and everything and make sure everything works great and then replicate it four different times. And each of these four quadrants, we could do something different. Like one of them I could just have all white sheep. And then another one, I could jump in there and re-dye the sheep if I want them to be different colors. I think it's going to be pretty flexible and it's going to work out pretty well. And ultimately, this minecart is going to make its way all the way around all four quadrants. But today, all I want to do is get one of these quadrants done so we can actually see it in action and kind of do a proof of concept. That is one quadrant of this farm basically done. I have this area up here that's all enclosed and I've got a couple of sheep in there. I'll probably breed up a few more. And what's going on up top is there are some dispensers that are face down. And inside these dispensers, we're gonna put some shears. And I have a clock set up here, just a kind of a good old etho hopper clock, and I'm gonna load it up with a lot of items. So maybe every five or you know eight minutes, it will go off. I'll probably put a repeater right here just to feed the signal in. And I did a little bit of testing, and the hitbox on these guys is just a little bigger than a block, and so I just put the dispensers every other block. That way I didn't have to make so many of them got a light in the middle to keep it all lit up and uh, yeah I think what will happen is periodically this will go off send a signal here and then these dispensers facing down will shear all of the sheep in this area at the same time and then our little minecart that's going back and forth will go underneath pick up all the drops and take them down into our base this here, you know, I would love it if I could figure out a way to tie it into the minecart that goes up to the base, but I haven't quite figured out a way to do that yet. Then I would only have to have one clock over here. It would be great if like every five times this went off, this guy got sent off, but it's kind of tight in here, and so I'm not sure how to run a line down without interfering with other stuff. I'm going to play with it for a little bit, and I think that's where I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had fun. Please like and subscribe if you want to follow along on the adventure. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.